As has already been said to you, Merry Christmas uh, from me and my family. Uh, we're so glad that you are here with us this morning, whether you're visiting uh, from out of town or just you're in town and you just are checking out a church because it's, uh, it's Christmas Eve. We're so glad you're here uh, and welcome. And uh, I want to make sure that you know that we want to get to know you if you would like that. Uh, in front of you is a QR code that you can scan and put some information in and we'll get in touch with you and set up a time to uh, meet with you. Um, also, after the service, I'll be in the lobby over to my left. Uh, just drop by and say hi. It'd be great to, to meet you, to connect with you, and uh, see if there's a chance for us to get to know each other a little bit more. We're going to get into God's Word, and so let me encourage you to grab a Bible, maybe the one that's in front of you, or maybe you brought one. It'll also be on the screen as well. Uh, I want you to turn to John chapter 1. We're going to be looking at a few verses from John 1, 1 to 5 this morning as we get into Christmas, right? I mean, this is a great day to be at church, and uh, I'm excited to be with you to sing and now to get into God's word together. I'm going to read for us John 1, 1 to 5. You're welcome to stand with me. If you uh, prefer to stay seated, you can do that as well. John 1, 1 to 5. Please stand with me. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This is God's word for us this morning. Hallelujah is right. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, during the month of December, our series that we've been going through is called With. And what we've been doing over the past several weeks is looking at how do we reimagine life with God? Uh, and that's very particularly chosen because what we understand is that there are many people who are living life without God in this world right now. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and, and you're trying to make it happen, but you're trying to do life without him. And what I want to tell you this morning is that you can experience a relationship with him because of what's happening at Christmas. And this is what's on offer for you this morning. More than just what's on offer for you this morning, though, this is God's design for your life. He has designed you with the very particular purpose in your life, and that is to do life with him, to connect with him, to experience life with him. If you think about your soul's deepest desire, like what do you deep down desire? It, it can be kind of masked in all kinds of things, but if we just kind of peel back the layers of your life and my life, one of our deepest desires is to connect with our creator. This is how he has designed us. But more than just his design, it's also his desire for us as well. So if we go back in our Bibles to the very beginning in Genesis, what we would see is that God was living with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And then we fast forward to the end of the Bible and we'd see that it is God living with man again in a new heaven and a new earth. And everything in between Genesis and Revelation is about God restoring that relationship with him through Christ. And that's why Christmas is so significant because it shows us that God's desire is to do life with you. And some of you this morning may have a broken relationship with your creator that can be fixed Right now, this morning, as we behold Christ in the birth, in his birth. And so what's on offer for you is the restoration of a relationship. It's for you this morning. Now, obviously, it's Christmas Eve, and uh, like my house and probably like yours, we have a Christmas tree up, and under the Christmas tree is a bunch of gifts that are wrapped up, uh, and tomorrow morning, we're going to tear into those gifts. I don't know what it looks like for you on Christmas morning. Uh, maybe you're very methodical, you know, one gift at a time, you know, families do it different. It's very contained, very, you know, you know, and other families, it's just like a free-for-all, like people are just going crazy, this you know, stuff's flying everywhere. But at the end of that moment, all of the gifts under the tree are opened, Right? I mean, that's the point. <laughs> you don't just be like, well, Christmas came and there's the gift and we just kind of left it there. No, you open it up and you tear into it one way or another. I say that because what's on offer for you today is a gift that's kind of under the Christmas tree. This life with God. And it's time to tear it open. It's time to get right into it and open it up for you. And that's what's on offer for you this morning. This matters so much. Because so many people are wandering through the darkness of life. 
So many are trying to find fulfillment, life, and vitality, searching for a way out. And what's an offer for you this morning is this relationship through Christ. The verses that I took us to in John are extremely important for understanding what's going on at Christmas time. And so I I hope you can keep your Bibles open there. But we look at what John is doing here in John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. And what we understand is that he has a very non-traditional Christmas narrative. So if we opened up Matthew and Mark and Luke, what you'd see is you'd see shepherds, you see sheep, you see wise men, you'd see Mary, you'd see Joseph. And John leaves out every single one of those details. None of them are here. Instead, what John does is he goes back to before anything existed, before you existed, before creation existed. And what he does is he firmly fixes the birth of Jesus, not just in the temporal events of what happened, but in the eternal plan of God unfolding in the person of Jesus Christ. And so his approach is very different. He kind of comes at it from a different angle here. And what we see is that the nexus point between the temporal and the eternal is seen in the person of Jesus Christ. And so this is my main point I want us to look at this morning. We'll unpack it a little bit. Is that your life with Jesus is a life of victory over darkness. And we see this primarily in verse 5. You see, we're going to kind of go backwards through the text, but you see in verse 5, he says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And so the first point we want to make this morning of this verse here is that Jesus will win the war over darkness. He will be triumphant. He will have victory over darkness. And so he says here, the light shines into the darkness. Now, the way the Bible uses light is very particular and it's very significant. And John, in his narrative of the life of Jesus, does the same thing. But if we went back to the Old Testament and we looked at the use of light in the Bible, we have a great example of this in the Exodus of the Israelite people when they were in slavery in Egypt. You might remember this, but God led them out of their slavery through an illuminating light. A presence that was before them that led them out of their slavery into their, where they were going, into the wilderness and beyond. And then that light would also then go behind them and also then protect them from their pursuing enemies. This is the use of light throughout all the scriptures. An illuminating presence leading the way forward and protection from darkness. And so the light here, when it says shines in the darkness, we need to keep those two things in mind. An illuminating presence out of enslavement and protection from enemies. And so John says here, the light shines in the darkness. How do we know then that this light that shines in the darkness is referring to Jesus? I'm going to point you to a few verses. They'll be on the screen or you can turn there if you want to. First one is in John 8 verse 12. Jesus says this. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So you see what Jesus is saying there. He's saying, I am that light. I am the light, that illuminating presence of God in this world that is leading people out of their slavery into freedom and protecting them. Jesus says, I am that light. Another one, over in John 12, verse 46, Jesus says this, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. And so you see what John is doing. He is building a case from the very beginning of John chapter 1 that this light that shines in the darkness, what is his purpose, but how is it fulfilled in the person of Jesus, saying he is that light that has come into the world, and when you are following him, you don't have to remain in darkness anymore. The presence of Jesus is that light. We have to understand, too, from verse 5, that the birth of Jesus was set in the context of a war. Now, it's not a physical war. It's not what's going on. It is a spiritual war. 
So you see in the verses there, he says, the light shines in the darkness. So what is the darkness? He says it again, and the darkness has not overcome us. So we need to understand what is the darkness that John is referring to. If you look at John chapter 3, verse 19, this is also what Jesus says. He says this about the darkness. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. Okay, so we understand now Jesus is saying, I am that light that's come into the world. And people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. So what Jesus is saying there, uh, just kind of building where John has just said about the light shining in the darkness, is that darkness is the evil that is in this world. And all of its ugly sisters. Injustice. Oppression. All these consequences that there's an evil presence in this world that you feel and I feel on a regular, ongoing basis. This is the darkness with which Jesus has shined his light into. Ephesians chapter 6 would also remind us that our life is set in the context of war. That there's an evil in this present darkness. That we are fighting against spiritual forces of evil in that spiritual realm. And so in a very real way, we, we understand that there is a desolation and a darkness that is growing in this world. We feel that often, and we feel that consistently, evil and injustice, oppression, all these things are happening in the world around us. And yet verse 5 gives us this extraordinary confidence. Jesus will win the war of darkness. You see it there when he says, the darkness has not overcome it. What is it? The light. The light shines into the darkness and Jesus will conquer it. His light that comes into the world is, is not like a fading lights of a, of a luminary. You know, our, our kids are down in the, in the gym area. The luminary is lighting the way. Those things are going to fade out. And my wife and I put Christmas lights on our house this year that are fading out. They don't longer work anymore. That, we should probably just take them down, but we put them up anyway. This is not the light of Christ coming into the world. He's not fading over time. Yes, he was born in a temporal place. And yet his light still shines today and the darkness will not overcome it. What a triumphant statement. It might feel like darkness will win. But by the authority of God's word, I proclaim to you today that Jesus will win. Amen. This is a confident assurance. I am so confident of this. I stand before you as, as just a man who's looking to the text saying, that is what it's saying. But how can we be so confident Let's look at what John says. Let's go backwards, you could say, through the text. Look at verse 4. This is the confident assurance that we have that Jesus is going to win. He is, in verse 4, the light of men. He is the light of life. We can be so confident that Jesus won because he is the light of life. The word for life there is not just the word for physical life. It's the word for spiritual life. And as light of this world, he leads us out of our darkness into spiritual life. That light is progressing. It is powerful to bring light and life. And it's progressing still today as people are giving their life to Jesus. A light shining in the darkness. He is the light of life. Well, not only is he the light of life, verse 3 will tell us that he is stronger than the darkness. Look at verse 3. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. It's just a reminder to us that who is this Jesus that we are worshiping this morning? He is the creator of all things. It says all things were made through him. Him is referring to Jesus. And without him was not anything made that was made. He is the creator of everything. And as the creator of everything, he is the restorer of everything. Every broken part of this world, every desolation and destruction that evil and darkness wants to take back, Jesus is going to restore. He is giving that back. We could say it this way, that the made is not greater than the maker. He is stronger than the darkness. 
And what we see throughout all of Jesus' life as, as we see his life unfolded through the, the narrative of John is that Jesus is constantly battling the darkness, all the desolation in the world. So things like disease, disease. He's healing people left and right of diseases. The demonic, he is casting out demons of oppression that people are dealing with and he's casting those demons out and he's conquering death. You might remember, he rose Lazarus from the dead. But Lazarus ended up dying, but Jesus himself died on the cross and rose again to never die again. Conquering death. He's stronger than these darkness in this world that we experience. So he's stronger than that. He's the light of life. And in verses one to two, we understand then that he is God. It says there, the word was in the beginning and the word was with God and the word was God. The word, word there is the word for Jesus. You see that in verse 14, if you have it in your Bibles, that word became flesh and dwelt Among us. So the eternal word of God has now taken on human flesh, which is seen in the person of Jesus. He was with God in the beginning. He was there. He was God, not in the past tense, but as an ongoing, He is God. He is eternal. There is only one true living God, and He reigns over everything. So this is why we can have such confident assurance because all those things, this is who he is. He's the light of life. He's stronger than darkness. He is God. And that is why we have this confident assurance that says, by the authority of God's word, Jesus will win over the darkness in this world. He shines. Well, this is all awesome stuff, isn't it? This is beautiful. Think about just Christmas. What are we doing here? Why are we celebrating the birth of this person that we say Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world? It's so significant for your life because what this means for you is that Jesus' victory from verse 5 is your victory. This is so important to us because your life with Jesus means that you can move from being a victim of darkness to being a victor over darkness because Jesus will win. And so whatever is enslaving you today, the darkness in yourself, in your heart, the darkness in this world which you experience, it it could be an addiction that you are experiencing in your life right now. Some of you here may be addicted to drugs, to alcohol, to pornography, maybe some are addicted to video games. You may, you may, it sounds funny, but it's very true, right? Some may be addicted to stuff, to success, to all kinds of things, any kind of addiction. And what Jesus is saying here, the light shines in the darkness in your life and sets you free. Whatever is enslaving you to abuses you have suffered in your life. It could be the abuse of someone else who has damaged you mentally, emotionally, physically. And it's enslaving you. There's a darkness in your life that the light of Christ shines into and can lead you out of. Perhaps it's simply a sordid trouble of just living in a broken world that you're going through. And it feels as if darkness is creeping in in your life. Friends, Jesus will be victorious over that and therefore you can be victorious over those things we might say well how is this possible it's his victory i didn't i didn't do anything it's his victory allow me for a few minutes to to talk about sports i know some of you here probably love sports some of you probably hate sports you're like i don't like sports analogies but i think this is helpful for us Uh, you might remember a couple months ago that the denver nuggets won the championship right Some of you are big-time basketball fans, and you were all into it. My family was totally into it. We were glued to all single one of those games they were being played. And at the end of the day, uh, maybe some of you bought a hat that said, you know, NBA champions, or you bought a sweater, maybe the, you know, the sweatpants, whatever it may be. It said, you know, that was me. Like, I'm, I'm with that team. You may not like basketball, but maybe you did that with the Avalanche when they won the championship. Pick in your mind your favorite sports team. 
And what do we say when our favorite sports teams win? We won. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. They won. They did it. I didn't do anything. I sat on my couch and just watched on the TV. That was a great game. That was amazing. I won. I go out and buy the gear and pretend as if I did it, right? We all do this constantly and consistently. This is what we do in our life. I say that as an analogy because Jesus' victory over death, you can claim my victory. His victory over darkness is your victory over darkness. When you are connected to him, when you have that relationship with him, you can say, I win. This is meant to pump you up and charge you up. Like, let's go, right? Like, let's go, right, on the coattails of his victory, his death, his resurrection is your new life, your victory over addiction, <laughs> over abuse, over whatever sort of trouble you are going through in life. You claim it as your own. The fact that Jesus wins means that you can win. The darkness of your life can be turned out. If you're sitting here this morning and your life is full of guilt, it's full of shame, you carry that in your backpack, friends, you can leave here this morning forgiven and set free because this is why Jesus came. Perhaps this morning you are walking in fear. You're afraid. His love wipes out your fear. Perhaps this morning you're in the grip of death itself. Maybe some of you are facing death right now or you have a loved one who's facing death. Friends, you can be released from that fear of death because Jesus came to give life. The unfolding plan of God is now revealed in Christ's birth. And that is that you can walk out of darkness into this marvelous light the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. So in many ways, when we are, we are celebrating Christmas, what we are celebrating is the great reversal that has begun now in the presence of Jesus in his first coming. And that great reversal will be consummated when he comes again, right? Right? So we are celebrating the first advent. He has come. Christ has come and he will come again. So we look forward. Yes, we look backwards and we can celebrate and we can enjoy the birth of Jesus, our king. But it should also draw us forward and say he is coming again, friends. And when we are in him, we have victory. Isn't Christmas full of these great promises? So many promises of life with him is this victory over darkness. But I want to give you a small warning as well. And that is this. That promise is for those who come to Christ. In John chapter 3, if you want to turn there, you can. Jesus says this. Light is coming to the world, but there are people then who will flee the darkness. And that's sometimes what happens in people's life. The light of Christ can shine beautifully and perfectly. We see his victory. But sometimes what people do is when they see the light, they retreat back deeper into their darkness. They they go back into it because they're afraid. They're afraid of being exposed or they simply just love their deeds of darkness. Friends, you cannot claim the victory of Christ when you retreat back into the darkness. Others of us have seen that light and are running to the light. Let me encourage you this morning Come to the light. That Christmas promise of victory is for those who come to him. Jesus would tell us, believe in the light so that you can become like the light. Beautiful promise for us. Don't let it go unwrapped. Let me pray for us and then we'll light our candles this morning. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning humbled by your love humbled by the way that you have entered into the brokenness of our life and not with condemnation but with salvation and so this morning we celebrate all that you have done for us 
that we could have never have done for ourselves. Thank you for making it possible for us to have a relationship with you. And so over this morning, God, we just come humbly worshiping you in all of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.